Bismillahir Rahman Rahim. Uh, dear audience, I am Tanvir Hassan. I welcome you all in today's lecture. In this lecture, I shall cover the life and works of Egyptian Queen Cleopatra. In fact, Cleopatra was a female pharaoh. Uh, in ancient time, the kings were known as pharaoh. Uh, pharaoh is not their name; it was the title. So Cleopatra was one female. The ruler who ruled ancient Egypt, and she was very famous for her contribution. So first, let me start with the timeline when Cleopatra was alive. In fact, if I want to talk about Cleopatra, so I need to give a small background of Cleopatra. As you know. Uh, you have heard about the famous Alexander the Great. So Alexander the Great was the ruler of ancient Greece. When he died, his empire, empire, the Greek Empire, was. Almost half of the world. So that empire was divided into his four generals. One of the generals' name was Ptolemy. So Cleopatra was born in this Ptolemy's house, and this general, famous general, known as Ptolemy, he took control of Egypt. So if you see the timeline here in the slide, you can see. 753 BC, Rome was founded. 509 BC, Rome became a republic. In 218 BC, Hannibal invades Italy. The famous incident of Hannibal's invading and attacking Italy through Alps. This happened in 218 BC. From 218 to up to 45 BC, Julius Caesar was the dictator of Rome, and Cleopatra was alive within 218 to 45 BC. In fact, Cleopatra had relation with Julius Caesar. Then, in 44 BC, Julius Caesar was assassinated, and afterwards, in 27 BC. Rome Republic ends. So this is the timeline we find. Cleopatra was alive between the timeline uh, of period of 218 BC to 45 BC. So this is the Alexander's Empire and the Hellenistic world, as you can see in the map. Alexander had conquered half of the world. And after his death, his empire was divided by divided <laughs> into four of his generals. Those four domains are collectively known as the Hellenistic world. So this is the map. Here comes Cleopatra. So Cleopatra's period was. 69 BC to 330 BC, to be exact. According to the history, the life of Cleopatra is a story of love, greed, and romance. Cleopatra was born in 69 BC, long after the era of the pharaohs had passed, but she was worshipped by many Egyptian people. Cleopatra was born in Egypt, but her ancestry came from Greek. I said Cleopatra's father was Ptolemy, who was a Macedonian general. So, by ancestry, Cleopatra belongs to Macedonia, but she was born in Egypt and she lived her whole life in Egypt. 
she was a part of the ruling family that had controlled the ancient kingdom of Egypt for hundreds of years. Alexander the Great was a military genius from Macedonia, a mountainous land which is north of Greece. Alexander led his army into Egypt and freed the Egyptian people from the Persian rule. The grateful Egyptian people worshipped Alexander as a pharaoh. When Alexander died in 336 BC, his empire was divided amongst his top generals. I mentioned it earlier. And Ptolemy was one of the generals. He took control of the Egypt and he became the first ruler of the Ptolemaic dynasty. So this is the statue which was found during excavation of Egyptian land of pharaohs and perhaps these are the two statues of Cleopatra but we cannot be certain we assume that these are the statue of Cleopatra so Ptolemy 7 Ptolemy correction Ptolemy 12 was Cleopatra's father when Ptolemy died in 51 BC his will decreed that 17 year old Cleopatra and her 12 year old brother Ptolemy 13 were to be married and they were to rule Egypt Cleopatra was very different ruler than the Ptolemies who came before her she learned the Egyptian language the other Ptolemies spoke only Greek but Cleopatra learned the language and practiced the religious customs of Egypt and many of the Egyptians viewed her as a pharaoh, female pharaoh. In 48 BC, Cleopatra's generals found her, found that they could not control her. So they ousted Cleopatra and made her brother the sole monarch of Egypt. A few months later, a Roman army led by Julius Caesar arrived in Egypt. Caesar was pursuing another Roman army that tried to keep Caesar from returning to Rome. Caesar's army was much larger than the Egyptian forces and so Cleopatra postulated that Caesar could return to her power. Cleopatra arranged to have a huge carpet delivered to the 54 year old Caesar. When Caesar unrolled the carpet, she found, he found rather, a 22 year old young girl. And it was Cleopatra who was wrapped inside the red carpet. Cleopatra and Caesar became lovers. And the Roman general stayed in. Egypt with Cleopatra and his army captured and killed the people, those who all were becoming obstacle for Cleopatra and they made Cleopatra the ruler of Egypt and Cleopatra's brother Ptolemy 13 was drowned in the Nile while he tried to flee Caesar's army. A long history. In this slide you can see Cleopatra and Caesar. They were lovers and they got married. Egyptian law did not allow a queen to rule without a king. So Cleopatra had to marry her another brother, Ptolemy XIV but she was in love with Caesar. Caesar and Cleopatra spent the next seven months traveling along the Nile where Caesar saw how the Egyptian people worshipped Cleopatra. Cleopatra was a very powerful and she con conquered many lands but Cleopatra 
wanted Caesar to stay in Egypt and become a pharaoh. But Caesar had something in his mind. Caesar returned to Rome in 46 BC with Cleopatra and the newborn son, Caesarion. Caesar was very popular with the Roman people. They named him the dictator of Rome. Cleopatra was a bit unfortunate. She was not that popular with the Romans. She had enraged the Roman people by calling herself the new queen, Isis. Many Romans were unhappy that Caesar was planning a foreigner, planning to marry a foreigner. Caesar was murdered ultimately in 44 BC. After that incident, Cleopatra had to leave Rome and return to Egypt. And after coming to Egypt, Cleopatra poisoned her brother, who was the ruler of Egypt, Ptolemy XIV, and named her four-year-old son as the new Egyptian king. Ultimately, Cleopatra became the pharaoh. Although Cleopatra showed her four-year-old boy to the people, but actually she was ruling behind the curtain. In the next slide we are seeing Anthony and Cleopatra. Still Anthony has not arrived in the scene. So Cleopatra is now dominating Egypt and Rome again was in turmoil after Caesar's murder. Several armies competed for control. The two greatest Roman armies were commanded by Mark Antony and Octavian. Octavian was the adopted son of Julius Caesar, but Mark Antony was believed to have led a larger army. When Antony asked Cleopatra to meet with him, Cleopatra decided that she had another opportunity to enter into the power both in Egypt and Italy. A legend says that when Cleopatra met Antony, the Egyptian queen adorned her ship with so many roses, petals, that the Romans knew of her fragrance before they could see her ship. She walked off the ship dressed as a Aphrodite, a Greek goddess of love. Anthony was love struck immediately with the Egyptian queen. But to tell you, Anthony was the grand nephew of Caesar. However, Anthony fell in love with Cleopatra. And Anthony, before meeting Cleopatra, he had already married Octavian's sister. But when he saw Cleopatra, he forgot his wife and his two children. So Octavian became very annoyed on Antony. And in a battle, Octavian's army defeated Mark Antony's forces and led an invasion to Egypt in 30 BC. Seeing no other way, and as a result of a defeat of a war, Antony committed suicide by falling on his sword. What about Cleopatra? Cleopatra fearing that she would be falling into the hands of the Romans and become a slave in the land once she ruled, that is Italy. So she decided that it would be better for her to swallow poison. According to a legion, the former queen Cleopatra asked for an asp, an Egyptian cobra, to be given with a fruit basket. And the asp was the symbol of royalty in the Egyptian culture. So a Egyptian cobra was delivered to her. And actually Cleopatra died, uh, Cleopatra died 
getting a bite from the cobra but the egyptian people thought she became immortal so in the next slide we can see cleopatra is committing suicide with the help of a egyptian cobra the death of cleopatra was very tragic she was a ruler she was a queen married to caesar then married to mark antony she was a lover ruler very powerful woman but at the end it all ended in tragedy so by cleopatra we can see a glimpse of history cleopatra came to power in egypt only at the age of 17 but let me tell you one thing female rulership or dictatorship is very rare in ancient history male dominated ancient history but amongst men in that ancient time in egypt cleopatra became ruler and she, she ruled egypt and italy both it all started once she was at the age of 17. she reigned from 51 bc to 30 bc cleopatra was a macedonian her ancestry was macedonian however she was still an egyptian queen luck her brought to egypt and made an egyptian queen cleopatra was worshipped at god as god by the general people cleopatra was legally obliged to have either a brother or a son for her consort if she wanted to rule she married her brother ptolemy 13 when he was only 12 years old she dropped his name from all the official documents regardless of the ptolemic instances and the male presence of the first among the co-ruler this was the rule that time and she dropped that rule ignored it she had her own portrait and name on coins in the time of that time she ignored her brother's rule all the way she could able to do so because egyptian women were uniquely accepted as capable of holding office and handling these affairs and how cleopatra met caesar she was rolled in a red carpet so cleopatra wanted to read herself of the brother's spouse ptolemy 13 ptolemy had sent her into exile and cleopatra needed roman support very badly she supposedly enlisted caesar with an infamous gift she rolled herself in the carpet and presented to caesar however with the help of caesar ptolemy was killed in 47 bc cleopatra dutifully married the next ptolemy brother in line ptolemy 14 when he was only 11 years old then went on to a cruise with her lover caesar cleopatra's union with caesar would have placed egypt firmly back on the map as a world power uh, during that time roman empire was the leading power so with their affair and knowledge cleopatra could take egypt to a dominating position and cleopatra was a very good diplomat also she used diplomacy in her marital life with this in mind she promptly produced the necessary son and heir to launch the dam dynasty of 
Caesarian. Republicans in Rome thought this by assassinating Caesar on the steps of the Senate before he was offered a throne in Rome. Octavian, Caesar's heir, later Caesarian, strangled following Cleopatra's defeat and the ritual of suicide. So in the scene came Mark Antony. I said already Mark Antony was the grand nephew of Caesar. So with so much of happening then Cleopatra met Mark Antony fallen in love. Although Mark Antony was married to Octavian's sister and then Octavian took revenge. And in the face of defeat, Mark Antony and Cleopatra committed suicide. So with the Cleopatra's death, the rule of Egypt finally passed to the Romans. So in summary, we can say the life of Cleopatra is, was very special. She was a diplomat. She was a ruler, female pharaoh. She was a lover. She was a mother. But at the end, she had to commit suicide because she did not want to become a slave to the people she ruled. It's a mixed feelings when you study the life of Cleopatra. In one stage we see power, in another phase we see the defeat. And the life of Cleopatra ends in suicide. It's a very sad tone. However, this is the history of Cleopatra. So that's it. We learned the life and the wars of Cleopatra, who was the ruler in Egypt. In next episode, we shall talk about some new episode of history. Until then, goodbye and adios.